There are many unsolved mysteries associated with ancient Egypt, but perhaps the biggest head-scratcher for archaeologists, scientists, and researchers has always been. How did such a prehistoric race of hunter-gatherers become so advanced in astrophysics, engineering, medicine, and the arts in just 1600 years? Normally, it takes tens of thousands of years for any prehistoric species to evolve to a state of sentience that would allow them to develop skills such as reading and writing. Never mind the capability to build massive structures like the Giza pyramids or the Great Sphinx. So how is it that the prehistoric Egyptians managed to skip an era or two to become rulers of the ancient world? To the point that they had established trade routes and were practicing a form of terraforma, irrigating the deserts with the water of the Nile to create lush, fertile farmland. Did aliens from the constellation Orion rule early Egyptian civilization? The idea that aliens landed on Earth in a spaceship and helped transform Neolithic survivors into a nation of highly educated professionals well-versed in astronomy and metaphysics is a contentious one. However, it does explain quite a few things, such as why all of the megaliths, pyramids, and the Great Sphinx have structural alignments with the three stars that make up the constellation known as the Belt of Orion. Egyptian scholar Robert Boval and astrophysicist Thomas G. Brophy are lovers of antiquities, who have conducted extensive investigations of the historical records kept at Egyptian sacred sites. In 2011, they co-published a book called The Prehistoric Origins of Ancient Egypt that described a race of super beings that ruled the Earth 16,000 years ago. This advanced civilization of black Africans was known as the Cattle People, and they may have been star seeds planted here on Earth by interstellar beings to ensure humanity's survival. Boval and Brophy's theories are derided by conventional scholars, who prefer to believe that the Egyptian culture sprung up on its own. However, conventional beliefs about the origin of civilization do not explain how ancient Egyptians ever rose to the top of the food chain. Given that 16,000 years ago, humans still had to fight off such vicious predators as the massive 6-foot-tall hyenas, 8-foot-long scorpions, and 7-foot-long jackals. Boval and Brophy's theory is that someone or something likely alien must have given humans a head start, or they would have succumbed to predators. For instance, how did the cattle people learn to domesticate livestock and protect them from daunting attacks from seven-foot-long jackals with so little physical prowess? Or how did they learn to navigate the Nile and cruise the Mediterranean with no idea how to sail or practice cartography? The cattle people's knowledge of the stars was so advanced that they were able to establish trade routes to the Mediterranean coast, Central Africa, and Sinai. They also created a stone calendar circle and megaliths at the ceremonial site of Mapta Playa, a place where spiritual and occult ceremonies were conducted. Hieroglyphical research shows that the cattle people had incredible engineering skills. How did they possibly construct massive monoliths at Gilf Kaber and Gebel Uenat on their own and have their apexes point so precisely to the belt of Orion? Plato's Opinion of Ancient Egypt The Egyptians kept fastidious records of everything that has ever happened in their sacred temple libraries, a fact that was not lost on the Greek philosopher Plato, who lived in Athens between 428 and 347 BC but studied in Egypt and Italy as a young man. In his writings, he described his initiation into the greater mysteries at the Great Pyramid of Giza. Plato states in Phaedrus that Egyptians invented numbers and arithmetic, and most important of all, letters. Hecateus of Miletus, who lived between 550 BC and 475 BC, was a Greek cartographer who traveled to Egypt and dazzled the priests there with tales about how he was descended from a god who lived 15 centuries ago. They then took him to a secluded temple deep beneath the sands of the Sahara Desert and showed him writings that showed that 345 generations, or 18,000 years, had passed since his sacred relative appeared from the skies to enlighten mankind. Of course, an antiquity such as this list of kings could not be removed from the temple. So Hecateus had to tell the tale orally to his philosopher peers. 
Centuries later, this same information was provided on a papyrus roll called the Turin Royal to Bernardino Dravetti, an antiquities collector who lived between 1776 and 1852 AD. Drovetti acquired the Turin Royal Canon in an undisclosed way that apparently caused a lot of hostilities from other collectors and the Egyptian government. The papyrus he acquired, sometimes called the Turin King List, is the most extensive list of pharaohs compiled by the ancient Egyptians and goes all the way back 18,000 years to the reign of Ta. The King's List reinforced the idea that prehistoric rulers could only be gods or demigods. You could not qualify as a king of Egypt unless you came from the heavens and landed on earth in a craft. Secondly, these gods reigned for extremely long periods of time. Inscriptions on mysterious monoliths found in the desert describe pharaohs as living and reigning over Egypt for over 23,000 years. 10,000-year-old monoliths the Egyptian monoliths were discovered in 1973 by a Bedouin guide who was crossing an area called the Naptapalya, a dry lake basin located about 100 miles south of Cairo. The 25 megalithic structures were further explored in the 70s by an American archaeologist named Fred Windorf. There were 25 of these megalith structures arranged in a stone circle. Radiocarbon dating indicated that they were at least 10,000 years old. When astrophysicist Thomas Brody examined the site, he discovered three central stones aligned with Orion, as the constellation would appear on a summer's night. These stones were in the same alignment with the tops of the three pyramids of Giza that point to Orion. Yet another ancient structure, the Egyptian Sphinx, that also dates back to 10,000 BC or earlier, is similarly oriented to Orion. It's as if these structures were trying to point back to a place in the galaxy that might have been an ancient home for humanity. Similar ancient cultures with advanced astronomical knowledge were also in Mesoamerica. Brody noted that the Mayans had similar creation myths that implied their gods came from the stars. Both the Egyptians and the Mayans built pyramids, worshipped the sun, and preserved the organs of the dead. Oddly, the symbol of the Egyptian Ankh, which means eternal life, has also been found in Mayan temples. Is the Ankh some kind of a universal message from an alien intelligence or a key that accesses superconsciousness? There is no real explanation as to how prehistoric Egyptians went from being Neolithic desert people to agriculturalists, engineers, and astrophysicists who are able to chart the heavens so accurately. The secrets of how a culture of primitive hunter-gatherers to a culture that rose to be such a sophisticated civilization during the time of Zip Tippi have yet to be unpacked, as Egyptologists continue to interpret the writings of Thoth. Thoth was a god on Earth who arrived during the time of Zip Tippi 3,000 years ago and composed over 12,000 books of knowledge. Among these texts were the Book of Pylons, the Pyramid Texts, and the Book of Thoth. The contents of these sacred texts remain mostly undeciphered until this day, yet may contain the secret as to what alien, supernatural, or godly presence advanced civilization so quickly after the Great Flood and in such a short time. Extraterrestrials, Zip Tippi, and Gecko Current archaeological theory supposes that modern civilizations emerged in the fertile area of the Tigris-Euphrates, with the rise of Sumerian and then Babylonic culture. However, Boval and Brophy claim that the ancient Egyptians blossomed as a civilization thousands of years before the Sumerians, thanks to a little help from their interstellar friends. The Egyptologist James Henry Breasted, who wrote the famous 1933 work about civilization called The Dawn of Consciousness, claimed that the sophistication of Egypt was so advanced that it made Babylonian culture seem crude. So, this begs the question still, how did the ancient Egyptians become so advanced so quickly? Was their knowledge of engineering, anatomy, and chemistry bestowed upon them by teachers from beyond? Breasted suggested that the residents of prehistoric Egypt may have received a jumpstart in consciousness from alien visitors during the antediluvian time of mankind. Antediluvian refers to that time period of 1625 years in the Bible, 
that is between the fall of man and the Genesis flood in biblical cosmology. In fact, in some cultish retellings of the big flood, the ark that saved humanity and selected animals was actually a spaceship that rose off a high mountain in Tibet or Africa or both. After being tutored by extraterrestrials, passengers on the alien ark may have then returned to Earth after the waters receded. They may have also had their intelligence and physique altered, giving them the temperament, ingenuity, and superior physique of what is known as the cattle people. Ziptipi is the Egyptian name for the antediluvian period. On the walls of the Temple of Horus in Upper Egypt, hieroglyphics tell the tale of how the bringers of knowledge arrived during Ziptipi in a cosmic egg that radiated colored light. According to the writings on the wall, this happened 18,000 years ago, when the god Thah, the creator and maker of all things, was the ruler of Egypt. At that time, all Egyptian rulers needed was to be supernatural to qualify for the job. Embrested claimed a similar arrival occurred 18,000 years ago in Tibet at exactly the same time. The entity known as Gecko descended in a spacecraft atop the Rutog Mountain and became the King of the Gods for the Zhang Ahang culture. This entity landed in a craft much like the Egyptian one, which was also a jeweled egg emanating glorious rays. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching Crunch. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing archaeological finds.